What's up everybody, welcome to Money Management channel. My name is Andrei and today I'm gonna be doing an update on MMTLP and FINRA saga. And uh, for today's video guys, I have uh, several news. First of all, I will explain you the position of Mark Basile. And I have to say that uh, his position uh, is not so pleasant for the majority of MMTLP community members. Because he thinks uh, that uh, the only path to the resolution that uh, we still have on the table is through litigations. And any other paths that we had on the table previously are pretty much irrelevant. And he speaks about uh, the potential congressional path. Then I will show you an update in regards uh, to the uh, October 24th uh, date that was mentioned in Scott Trott Rico lawsuit and I will explain you my position and I will explain you the thoughts behind the scenes uh, from Scott himself. On top of that guys, I will show you that uh, potentially Greg McCabe, Robert Lance Cook and the former CFO of Torchlight Energy will be testified uh, in the court. So, and before we dive deep into all of this, guys, please hit the like button for YouTube algorithm and drop me a line in the comment section for whatever reasons you want. And let's start with this news. You know that just uh, recently Mark Basile uh, made a set of uh, statements in his Twitter account in regards to the potential path to the resolution. And his opinion that is, uh, that is based uh, on his experience is following. The only path uh, that uh, we still have on the table right now is the path through litigations. And uh, for now we have two uh, lawsuits uh, that are still active and both of them are RICO lawsuits. Uh, by the way, we have three lawsuits. Uh, the most recent one was uh, filed as a class action lawsuit. And uh, two of them are RICO lawsuits, one of them is class action lawsuit. And uh, the other potential path to the resolution that uh, uh, a lot of uh, MMTLP community members uh, thought that it might be the primary path to achieve our main uh, goal is uh, the Congress path. But unfortunately for now we have, uh, uh, we have uh, extremely inactive Congress, we have extremely inactive uh, Congress members uh, that uh, could potentially help us. Uh, back in the days, but for now they are extremely silent. So, and let me show you the tweet uh, that uh, was uh, published by Mark Basile uh, just uh, uh, several hours ago. And he uh, responded to the tweet that was written by X Volven. And X Volven wrote, I thought uh, all was saying stay the course and keep contacting Congress. You and Burda and everyone on junk savvy spaces. Everyone seemed uh, to agree on this. I thought court things uh, were happening at the same time, like Wes Christian and uh, what uh, was a uh, uh, flamethrower or the other LC4. And uh, Mark responded, I said that a year ago because at that time uh, it seemed uh, it was a logical path since uh, there was no uh, lawsuits. And guys, uh, you know that uh, we had a flamethrower, the company that was uh, made uh, by John Burda and uh, several other uh, Torchlight Energy shareholders in order to uh, make uh, their own investigation and they hired Wes Christian, the person who has, in my opinion, the highest level of, of expertise uh, in the field of uh, uh, naked shorting actions. And uh, I have to say that uh, we don't have any results from this side of uh, our battle. That is why, guys, uh, I have to admit that uh, I am pretty much agree with Mark Basile, because uh, at this moment we don't have any other potential paths to the resolution rather than uh, litigations. On top of that, guys, take a look uh, right here. Sam I am uh, wrote uh, this tweet uh, just six hours ago, and she said, Remember when Drew said uh, he was 99% sure we would be trading on TLP in 90 days, five, 150 days ago? And she refers uh, to the tweet that was written uh, on, uh, on April 16th. And uh, she wrote uh, at that moment, breaking on MTLP news, due diligence is 99.9% .9 sure we are going to trade on MTLP and it could be within 90 days. Unfortunately, uh, this uh, forecast uh, never comes uh, to the fruition. And unfortunately, due diligence is uh, still uh, quite silent in regards to this forecast. 
And uh, yes, guys, uh, we have a lot of speculations, we have a lot of uh, rumors and we have uh, a lot of hope inside the community. That is why, guys, I understand, uh, I understand for 100% uh, your thoughts in regards to my yesterday's uh, video. And for those of you who don't know, I made a thumbnail uh, with the title that uh, we have to mark our calendars uh, for October 24th. And basically it is the date that was uh, mentioned in Squad Rod's Rico lawsuit. And let me show you this document again. Uh, it is uh, the document that was uh, filed uh, by Scott Roth uh, uh, and he uh, filed it on September 13th of this year. And uh, here is uh, under the uh, number four of uh, his request, you can find this. By virtue of the US Supreme Court decision uh, in uh, Sloan, Trot hereby requests uh, of this court uh, a writ of mandamus against Finra CEO Robert Cook to immediately restart trading in MMTLP on the US OTC market for two days of buy to close to commence on or about uh, 24th of October 2024. Uh, Trot makes a reference to the proposed writ of mandamus filed uh, at the incept of this action as the model, substituting only Cook for SEC Chairman Gary Gensler. And guys, I told you my personal opinion that uh, I think uh, the chances uh, to have uh, uh, MMTLP shares uh, tradable again uh, in uh, five or six uh, weeks uh, is uh, pretty slim. The chances are pretty slim. But at the same time, a lot of people are waiting uh, some uh, major news uh, from me and uh, I have to admit that I am the only YouTuber who is still working uh, with MMTLP uh, community and uh, who is uh, consistently posting uh, the news video in regards to this case. And guys, I explained it multiple times. I'm not here for the money. I'm not here for views or any other reasons. The only reason I'm here is uh, to help MMTLP community members because I see with this U3 Hulk I see a lot of violations uh, on the US stock market and uh, definitely each and every person uh, might be uh, in uh, the same situation and that is why I'm here for the major goal to have a fair and transparent market. On top of that guys, and it is not a secret, I'm not an MMTLP shareholder. That is why my opinion is 100% unbiased and that is why guys you can rely on my opinion whether you like it or not and I will uh, do my best in order to help you to have uh, a resolution. And guys, in response uh, to uh, basically yesterday's video and in response uh, to the date that was mentioned uh, in uh, Scott Roth's uh, document, uh, Scott himself uh, wrote this tweet and uh, let me quote it in details. This was the original writ of mandamus uh, proposed uh, when I filed Trot vs. Rubinstein on July 19, 2024. At this point, uh, it makes uh, more sense to switch it to FINRA and Cook unless the judge rules that FINRA is operating illegally. There are a lot of uh, angles uh, being taken uh, by yours truly here and I am definitely not stating two days uh, of trading uh, position close only is the hill I'm going to die on because it makes no tactical sense to put all your eggs in one basket. Uh, keep every option open and uh, with each way we provide uh, the court with alternatives in resolving this and put brand X on notice that under the terms and conditions in my proposed mandamus their losses could be staggering. So this is more in keeping with the proviso that you can't uh, slay us so you better pay us. So two days of uh, position close only on the table. A payout instead? Sure, there are other possibilities. But it all hinges on whether I've done enough to keep the claims alive with all the arbitration and uh, motion to dismiss. I've been asked uh, to explain everything going on and uh, as I stated earlier, I really don't want uh, to do any space calls uh, because I have really won nothing yet except to be able to have uh, appealable US constitutional issues to bring to the second circuit court if my case gets tossed. I will explain things later today. And uh, I have to say that uh, I completely agree with uh, Scott. Uh, he understands for 100% that this request uh, of uh, two days of trading is uh, just uh, one uh, option that might happen or not. 
and uh, we have to rely on any potential paths uh, and we have uh, to keep this in mind but as Scott uh, has written in his uh, tweet, uh, it makes no tactical sense to put all your eggs in one basket. And guys, that is why I make these type of videos and that is why I make these thumbnails in order to attract more people uh, to the problem and in general. Because I am the only person who makes uh, this video on a daily basis. Uh, let me remind you that Ali makes uh, the same videos uh, once in a three or once in a four days and uh, rare dd makes completely different videos uh, he makes uh, the videos uh, on the topics of his own investigations that is why guys the only informational source uh, that you can uh, watch uh, basically daily is my video and uh, you might like it or not but i will continue to do it on top of that guys uh, take a look uh, right here in response to this tweet uh, Marcus wrote uh, his opinion and uh, uh, if you don't know uh, who this person is, Marcus uh, uh, just recently made his uh, due diligence and he explained and he showed a lot of uh, rules that were violated by FINRA itself and uh, uh, he uh, found out uh, 11 rules on top of uh, 60, rule 6490 that, was, uh, that were violated by FINRA in MMTLP case. So, and let me show you what did he write. If I were to draw an analogy to the Lord of the Rings, uh, Scott is standing at the Black Gate of Mordor. Winning the motions to dismiss and arbitration would be like opening that gate, setting him on the challenging path to Mount Doom. His mission? To carry the Ring of Power, our due diligence and truth, and cast it into a fairy lava, destroying it once and for all, bringing down our very own Sauron, Finra. Let's hope the judge will open the gates for Scott. And he added this uh, picture and the guys. I have to admit that it is a very good analogy uh, with the Lord of the Rings uh, saga. But uh, in general, I think our saga is much longer than even saga of Lord of the Rings. We are here for almost two years and uh, we have uh, to uh, fight not only against the wrongdoers uh, but we are fight against the time because uh, one of the deadlines one of the major deadlines of uh, statute of limitations uh, is set on december 14th of 2024 that is why we have to push our case forward on top of that guys take a look right here uh, Christian Shaughnessy wrote this tweet and John Burdo reposted it. And uh, it is related to the uh, northern neighbor of uh, the United States of America. And uh, Canadian miners, as you can see, are stepping up uh, their efforts to call out uh, banks, politicians and exchanges who enables manipulation in the financial markets. They want a temporary short sale and ban and they want uh, to get rid of the short market exemption in Canada similar to the market exemption in the United States. And uh, if uh, it happens, guys, if uh, they succeed uh, in this uh, request, definitely it will be a precedent uh, for the US stock market as well to at least temporary ban illegal short selling or to make some changes on the US stock market. That is why, guys, we also have to keep an eye on uh, the northern uh, neighbor of uh, the United States of America. But uh, let me show you another quite interesting and, uh, in my opinion, important tweet. Roman Soups wrote this eight hours ago. MMTLP, breaking news. MMTLP, SEC versus John Burda and George Palikaros. Uh, case uh, uh, number, this is the number of case. Document filed on uh, uh, September the 10th. John Burda to bring witnesses. First witness uh, is Roger Wertley, CFO of Torchlight. Second witness is uh, uh, George McCabe, uh, former Torchlight chairman. And the third witness is uh, Robert Lance Cook, former board member. And I have to say that uh, this case uh, is not directly related to the uh, MMTLP uh, U3 Halt saga, but it is related to the allegations uh, and uh, it, it is related to the charges that uh, was uh, implemented uh, to MMIT, George Palikers and John Burda back in June of this year. And uh, here is uh, the response of John Burda and he wanted uh, to testify uh, these three people. Here you can see Roger Wurtele, the former chief uh, financial officer of Torchlight. Uh, next one is uh, 
Gregory McCabe, a former Torchlight board member. And uh, the third one is uh, right here, Robert Lance Cook, a former Torchlight board member and former member of Torchlight's audit committee. And uh, these people might also shed some light uh, on uh, this case. And uh, definitely, guys, if you want to know more about uh, this case, uh, you can see that uh, uh, the number of this case is following. 124CV04806-KPF. Uh, uh, and it was filed on uh, uh, September the 10th. It has uh, 16 pages. And here you can see... It is the reply memorandum in support of defendant John Burda's motion to transfer venue. And uh, I have to say that uh, we have to keep an eye on this uh, lawsuit as well, because uh, it might shed uh, more light uh, to the case in general. And for now, guys, I have no idea in which direction this uh, lawsuit uh, might bring us. But definitely it is worth our attention as well. And guys, let me tell you my personal story. I have a wife and two children aged 11 and uh, 15, as well as a small dog. After 30 years of living in Russia near the Baikal Lake, we decided to move. Now we reside in Serbia. Although I don't own any MMTLP shares, I invest a lot of time creating daily MMTLP videos. I have been doing this every day without days off and holidays for more than one and a half years. Now I wish to buy back this time from my family, from my children. We've agreed that I will ask the MHLP community to support me and I will give all the money to the children. Therefore, if you believe that I am providing useful content for you and uh, wish to support me, you can join my Patreon account. For $5 a month I will add your name to my list of supporters if you wish. Thank you in advance. The link you can find in the description below. So, I think that's all information that I want to provide you. If you like my video, please hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. And see you guys and girls next time. Bye! I got the cash in the bag, stadium packed. Born a rock star in this life, gone live it up on the attack. Baby, I'm bad, I just wanna get